Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. As a growing church family, we have the opportunity to support the ministry in various capacities. We want to remind you of the four simple ways you can give and help us to make an impact in our world. First, you can give by mail. Make your gift payable to the whole family church and mail it to 3469 Ames Boulevard, Marrero, Louisiana, 70072. For our online family who prefer giving electronically, you can give on your phone through the Church Center app. It's free to download and easy to use. Connect with the whole family church to begin giving quickly and securely. You can also give online by visiting our website at twfcla.com forward slash giving. It's convenient and allows you to set up recurring donations or give a one-time gift. Last, you can text to give. Simply text any amount to 84321 and follow the prompt. It takes less than a minute. However you choose to give, we want to thank you for your generosity and support as we work together to build people, families, and communities that are whole. Welcome to church. We are so glad that you are with us today. We are located at 3469 Ames Boulevard, Marrero, Louisiana, 70072. Join us for pre-service prayer starting at 9.30 a.m. with service immediately following. Here's what's coming up at the Whole Family Church. Shout out to Pastor Michael Davis of Destiny of Faith Church in Lafayette, Louisiana for a powerful word on unified faith last Sunday. And as Pastor Mike said, accept the invitation to come into partnership with the Almighty. Sunday, May 28th is Pentecost Sunday. Come celebrate with us the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and other followers of Jesus Christ. Get connected for Wednesday night corporate prayer. Take out your phones to take a pic of our Zoom login information or write this down. Our Zoom meeting ID is 863-9875-3896 and our passcode is 429-617. If you are unable to log in and would still like to connect, just dial in by calling 312-626-6799 and entering in our meeting ID and passcode. Join us on GroupMe for a daily word of inspiration from Pastor David Walker. Simply download the app for free and search for The Whole Family Church to connect. Never miss another whole family event or update. Sign up for TWFC text notifications following service. Be a virtual evangelist and share the link for today's message. This concludes our announcements. Have a great week.
Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. As a growing church family, we have the opportunity to support the ministry in various capacities. We want to remind you of the four simple ways you can give and help us to make an impact in our world. First, you can give by mail. Make your gift payable to the whole family church and mail it to 3469 Ames Boulevard, Marrero, Louisiana, 70072. For our online family who prefer giving electronically, you can give on your phone through the Church Center app. It's free to download and easy to use. Connect with the whole family church to begin giving quickly and securely. You can also give online by visiting our website at twfcla.com forward slash giving. It's convenient and allows you to set up recurring donations or give a one-time gift. Last, you can text to give. Simply text any amount to 84321 and follow the prompts. It takes less than a minute. However you choose to give, we want to thank you for your generosity and support as we work together to build people, families, and communities that are whole. Welcome to church. We are so glad that you are with us today. We are located at 3469 Ames Boulevard, Marrero, Louisiana, 70072. Join us for pre-service prayer starting at 9.30 a.m. with service immediately following. Here's what's coming up at the Whole Family Church. Shout out to Pastor Michael Davis of Destiny of Faith Church in Lafayette, Louisiana for a powerful word on unified faith last Sunday. And as Pastor Mike said, accept the invitation to come into partnership with the Almighty. Sunday, May 28th, is Pentecost Sunday. Come celebrate with us the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and other followers of Jesus Christ. Get connected for Wednesday night corporate prayer. Take out your phones to take a pic of our Zoom login information or write this down. Our Zoom meeting ID is 863-9875-3896 and our passcode is 429-617. If you are unable to log in and would still like to connect, just dial in by calling 312-626-6799 and entering in our meeting ID and passcode. Join us on GroupMe for a daily word of inspiration from Pastor David Walker. Simply download the app for free and search for The Whole Family Church to connect. Never miss another whole family event or update. Sign up for TWFC text notifications following service. Be a virtual evangelist and share the link for today's message. This concludes our announcements. Have a great week.
Welcome to church. We are so glad that you are with us today. We are located at 3469 Ames Boulevard, Morero, Louisiana, 70072. Join us for pre-service prayer starting at 9.30 a.m. with service immediately following. Here's what's coming up at the Whole Family Church. Shout out to Pastor Michael Davis of Destiny of Faith Church in Lafayette, Louisiana for a powerful word on unified faith last Sunday. And as Pastor Mike said, accept the invitation to come into partnership with the Almighty. Sunday, May 28th, is Pentecost Sunday. Come celebrate with us the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and other followers of Jesus Christ. Get connected for Wednesday night corporate prayer. Take out your phones to take a pic of our Zoom login information or write this down. Our Zoom meeting ID is 863-98. 753896 and our passcode is 429617. If you are unable to log in and would still like to connect, just dial in by calling 312-626-6799 and entering in our meeting ID and passcode. Join us on Group Me for a daily word of inspiration from Pastor David Walker. Simply download the app for free and search for The Whole Family Church to connect. Never miss another Whole Family event or update. Sign up for TWFC text notifications following service. Be a virtual evangelist and share the link for today's message. This concludes our announcements. Have a great week. church family, we oh, are God. Need to support the ministry in various capacities. We want to remind you of the four simple ways you can give and help us to make an impact in our world. First, you can give by mail. Make your gift payable to the whole family church and mail it to 3469 Ames Boulevard, Marrero, Louisiana, 70072. For our online family who prefer giving electronically, you can give on your phone 
through the Church Center app. It's free to download and easy to use. Connect with the Whole Family Church to begin giving quickly and securely. You can also give online by visiting our website at twfcla.com forward slash giving. It's convenient and allows you to set up recurring donations or give a one-time gift. Last, you can text to give. Simply text any amount to 84321 and follow the prompts. It takes less than a minute. However you choose to give, we want to thank you for your generosity and support as we work together to build people, families, and communities that are whole. Welcome to church. We are so glad that you are with us today. We are located at 3469 Ames Boulevard, Morero, Louisiana, 70072. Join us for pre-service prayer starting at 9.30 a.m. with service immediately following. Here's what's coming up at the Whole Family Church. Shout out to Pastor Michael Davis of Destiny of Faith Church in Lafayette, Louisiana for a powerful word on unified faith last Sunday. And as Pastor Mike said, accept the invitation to come into partnership with the Almighty. Sunday, May 28th, is Pentecost Sunday. Come celebrate with us the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and other followers of Jesus Christ. Get connected for Wednesday night corporate prayer. Take out your phones to take a pic of our Zoom login information or write this down. Our Zoom meeting ID is 863-9875-3896 and our passcode is 429-617. If you are unable to log in and would still like to connect, just dial in by calling 312-626-6799 and entering in our meeting ID and passcode. Join us on GroupMe for a daily word of inspiration from Pastor David Walker. Simply download the app for free and search for The Whole Family Church to connect. Never miss another whole family event or update. Sign up for TWFC text notifications following service. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Why, well, anybody who want to be filled Hallelujah. up this morning? I said, is there anybody who wants to be filled up this morning? Not just filled up, but filled up to the overflow. To you spill out on somebody else. To somebody else get blessed. Somebody say, fill me up. Say, fill me up. Say, fill me up till I overflow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many excited to be in the house of God this morning? I said, how many are you excited to be in the house of God this morning? Glory to God. We've had a, such a wonderful service thus far, and I'm telling you, it ain't over. Somebody say, it ain't over. Oh, no, oh, no. We're about to feast this morning on the word of God. I said, we're going to feast, feast this morning. Did you come hungry? Did you come thirsty? Amen, amen. God is so good. He's so good. He's so good. Amen. You can take your seat. Hallelujah. Are we ready? I'm going I'm to switch, switch mics. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Got to fix them lights, bro. Got to fix them lights. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) 
Glory be to God. Amen, amen, amen. It's so good to see y'all this morning. So much, so good to see y'all. Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. Somebody give it up for our mothers right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I know y'all can do better than that. Come on, somebody give it up for mothers. Glory to God. How many of you know you wouldn't be here without your mama? Amen. Whether you had a good one, a bad one, indifferent, you wouldn't be here without your mama. You need your mama. Amen. So happy Mother's Day to all of our wonderful mothers. Y'all look so beautiful this morning. I see y'all. I see y'all. Amen. God is so good. Uh, but I want to say good morning and happy Mother's Day not only to those in the house, but those who are watching all around the world. The millions of people watching all around the world. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. If this is your very first time here at the whole family church, or if this very first time tuning into our broadcast, I want you to know my name is Daniel Walker, and uh, we are excited that you chose to be here with us this morning. We know there's a lot of places you could be, but you chose to be here with us. And so if you are a local person and you're watching online, uh, we just want to invite you to come in the house every Sunday at 10 a.m. We're located at 3469 Ames Boulevard in Marrero. Amen? Yeah. Now I'm going to ask those at home if you are to be a virtual evangelist and to share this link. Amen? Yeah. Amen. All right, let's go. Now first, some family business. Y'all know we always got to take care of the family business first. Uh, it's, it's good to be back. Yeah. Amen. Our family was on a much needed 10-day vacation. And uh, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm thankful for the opportunity to rest. Amen. Somebody say rest. rest. Ain't nothing wrong with a little rest. I want to say a big thank you to Pastor Michael Davis and Pastor Deltrice Davis as well, as well as Pastor Ken and Pastor Mary for releasing them, amen, amen. to be here to assist us in this season, amen. amen. He, did a, he did a great job. How many of y'all know Pastor Mike did a great job? Amen. He really did. Amen. Glory to God. And so we are thankful for those godly connections and friends who can come through and make things happen. Amen. Amen. Now, also, I want to thank God for the whole family church, the community of the whole family church. Uh, you know, y'all, we are really becoming one. We really are becoming one. It's a beautiful thing to see. Uh, if y'all remember, for our Good Friday Fellowship, we had none other than Big Bertha's barbecue. Uh, Michael told us that if his name Big Bertha's, you know it's got to be good, <laughs> which is actually owned by uh, Ranisha's dad. And uh, it was such a hit that the people, some of the people here actually have utilized his services in their businesses and on their jobs and just spreading the love, amen? amen. And you know, I really, really, I, I love that because, you know, again, that's community. Yeah. That's family, somebody say family. Amen. You know, that's what we do around here. We support each other, amen? Amen, amen. amen. and so I got a sweet biscuit company and uh, if anybody needs some sweet biscuits, y'all just let me know, amen. Amen. I don't have no sweet biscuits, y'all. Amen. Don't ask me. All right. So uh, one more thing, one more thing, and I got to tell y'all this because this happened two weeks ago, and uh, I didn't get a chance to tell you that, tell you yet. But thank you for your generosity. Uh, two weeks ago, we we leveled up as a church family in a very crucial time for a person who is a stranger to many of you, uh, but she's one of my best friends, and she lost her daughter. Uh, but you as a family came together and we stepped up and we were able to raise a thousand dollars to give to her, y'all. Let me tell you, when we presented it, she looked, she was so surprised, she was so shocked and she was so grateful for the thoughts, for the love and for the prayers that we are praying for her. And I let her know, look, you know, we are gonna continue to raise you up and lift you up in prayer, amen? amen. Amen, amen. I thank God for a praying church. Isn't this a praying church? Hallelujah. It's a praying church. Glory be to God. It's a unique church. It's a unique church. I told Lisa, I said, I don't know. I, don't, I think I'm going to stop. We're going to stop asking for, for people to join. We're going to start giving applications to see if you're going to join. Are you qualified? Are you, are you generous enough to be a part of this family? All right, all right. Let's get our Bibles in our hands and let's make this bold Bible confession. Are you ready? Say this with me. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do. I can do. I can do. 
what it says I can do. This morning, I will be taught the word of God. I boldly say, my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I thank you, Father, that I am a hearer and a doer of the word. And after hearing the word, I declare I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Favor, increase, and promotion are in my life now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Mother's Day, Mother's Day. How many of you know for most people, most people, this is a great day of celebration and rejoicing. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we acknowledge that there are some people who may not have had uh, a good situation, and this may not be as much of a celebration. But I, I believe that the message today is going to encourage you in your life. Amen. So you can understand that what God has called a mother and what God has ordained for mothers, right, is the best thing. It's the best possible situation. And it's the, it's the ideal It's the thing that we ought to be striving for. Amen. Amen. So wherever you may fall, I'm still going to tell you, happy Mother's Day. You know, for some people, it's, you know, I know there's a lot of firsts, especially uh, in this house this year. Uh, If you don't know, I've been ministering while our senior pastor, Pastor David, recovers. Somebody say 110 percent. Amen. And so that's right. That's right. And so this is my first time ministering on a Mother's Day. And uh, it's also the first Mother's Day I've had without my grandmothers. All my life, I had my grandmothers on Mother's Day. First one without it. But then for Pastor, this is his first without his mom. And while, of course, his mom is my grandmother, she is his mama. And how many of you know Pastor loves his mama? He loves his mother. There's a special bond between a son and his mother. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm going to take a second to do this now. I'm thankful for my mother, my mom, right here on the first row, none other than missionary Veronica Walker. Oh, okay, no no missionary, no missionary, all right. Mom, I love you, I love you dearly. You're truly a special lady, and I I so appreciate how, who you have been in my life and in the life of not only my siblings, but who you have been to my dad as well, to our dad as well. Uh, You are truly, truly an amazing person, And I'm forever grateful to you for the sacrifices that you made for our family. And uh, I just want you to know, be encouraged, Mom. Because as I was thinking about all this, the scripture in Luke chapter uh, 1, verse 45 came to mind. And it says, and blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. God ain't finished with you yet. Amen. Amen. I say God ain't finished with her yet. Can I get some agreement? Can I get somebody to shout with her today? Amen. Glory to God. There shall be a performance, y'all. And not only for her, but I'm telling you, for every mother, for every mother who is here, believe, continue to believe God. There shall be a performance of the things that he has promised you in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I got a couple uh, Mother's Day jokes I got to crack before we start. To, get, to make sure the ice is fully broken. Because some of y'all still ain't loosened up yet. So I gotta, we got, we're going we to keep working on y'all till, y'all till y'all get with me fully. Amen. Amen. Here's the first one. It says daughter. So there's a daughter talking to a mom. She says, mom, what is it like to have the greatest daughter in the world? The mom says, I don't know, dear. You'd have to ask grandma. Somebody said, People who say they sleep like a baby don't have one. (laughs) Selah. (laughs) Sunday school teacher, tell me, Johnny, do you say your prayers before eating? No, ma'am, I don't have to. My mom's a good cook. (laughs) Hallelujah. Y'all, I was thinking about it, and uh, we were volunteering, Lisa and I, when we first got married, we were volunteering and doing some uh, basically like community service type stuff. And um, they were rebuilding a house for Habitat for Humanity. And uh, so we went to help out. And there was a lady in there. And she was from out of town. She might have even been from another country. I'm not sure. But she was in there in the house putting a skim coat of drywall 
on the walls. And she was doing such a good job. I'm like, I know there's a bunch of volunteers. Are you a professional? Like, who are you? Like, how do you, how do you know how to do that? And uh, she said, well, my father was a mother. My father was a mother. She said, and my mother was a mother. And I said, okay, happy Mother's Day to all y'all. <laughs> mother. She said, her father was a mother, and her mother was a mother. Y'all didn't get the joke. That's all right. All right, we're going to move on. <laughs> happy Mother's Day. Okay, amen. Good God. That one, that one went flat. All right, okay. <laughs> How many of you know good mothers are amazing, smart, talented, truly, truly wonderful women? They're the ultimate multitaskers. You work hard, you play hard, you take care of us, even when you don't feel good. Amen. You cook for us, most of you do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just look straight, nobody knows we're talking about you. Amen. <laughs> you clean up after us, you give us good advice, you cheer us on, you pick us up when we fall, and the list goes on. Yes. And the thing that probably is most amazing, it's really a miracle, is you actually create humans. Like that is a miracle, y'all. You actually incubate a person and then pop them out nine months later. That is a miracle. <laughs> it really is. You know, I was thinking, I was talking to the praise team. I said, my God, you know, it's four ladies and they all have kids. And I say, man, once, once baby Ezra arrived, y'all, the priest team would basically have produced the 12 disciples. <laughs> 12 whole people. My God. So I'm going to say it again. Good mothers are amazing. Yes. But how many of you know that we never, we never, we never arrive in life where we can always level up? Somebody say level up. If you haven't heard already, 2023 is our year to level up. And see, leveling up means for you to come up higher. It means for you to improve, for you to increase, for you to be excellent, for you to take your life to the next level. Somebody say level up. Leveling up is about going from the ordinary to the extraordinary. Do I have any mothers in the house who desire to be extraordinary mothers? Amen. It's time to level up. Tell your neighbor, say level up. level up. Our subject today is very simple. Super mom. What happens when mothers level up? Somebody say super mom. Super mom. Amen. Now, every superhero has to have superpowers, right? It's kind of the whole nature of being a superhero. You got to have some superpowers. You know, Superman, he can run he can run fast and he can fly and he's bulletproof. The Hulk, you know, he's super strong. Wonder Woman, she got that whip. Not really sure what the whip does, but it does some stuff. Amen. That's right. The tassel of truth or something like that. <laughs> and then that Storm, if you watch uh, the, the uh, X-Men. Thank you. Thank you, Ruby. If you watch X-Men, Storm, she can actually control the weather. I like Storm. Amen. But what is the superpower of super moms? Well, if you watch a lot of uh, this movie genre, superhero movie genre, you find out that oftentimes the superhero is unaware of their superpowers. It actually has to be revealed to them that they have these powers. And so today we're going to reveal one of your superpowers. Are you ready? Amen. amen, amen. Now, in order to do that, we're going to have to go back to where we left off with the resurrection of Jesus and its aftermath, all right? So yeah, I believe in the best way to teach is to build upon the lessons that we've already been teaching. Amen. Amen. And if you followed our series since Easter, you'll know that we've been taking a look at what happened after the resurrection. Amen. Amen. Including, we looked at the prayer that Jesus prayed in John chapter 17 when he said, Father, make them one. Amen. Now, let's take a look at a real super mom, the mother of Jesus, Mother Mary. Amen. All right, go in your Bibles to Acts chapter 1, and we're going to begin at verse number 12. What happened to Mary 
after the resurrection of Jesus. The very last mention in scripture of Mary, the mother of Jesus, comes in Acts chapter 1, in this passage that we're about to read. And it says in verse 12, Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication, with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. I like what the international version says. It says, with one mind, somebody say one mind. One mind. With one mind, all of them kept devoting themselves to prayer. Somebody say devoting themselves, devoting themselves. to prayer along with the women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. So where do we find Mary? Mary was found in prayer. Somebody say in prayer. In prayer. She was devoted to prayer, spending her life in prayer. If you want to be a super mom, you need to know that prayer is a superpower. Somebody say prayer Prayer. is a superpower. superpower. Now, why? Why is prayer a superpower? I'm going to give you five reasons. I'm not saying it's every possible thing, but these are the five reasons that we're going to talk about today that why prayer is a superpower. The first one is because there is protection in prayer. Somebody say protection. Protection. Then there are possibilities in prayer. Say possibilities. And then there is peace in prayer. Somebody say peace. Peace. How about provision in prayer? Say provision. Provision. And last but not least, there is power in prayer. Somebody say power. Power. Let's look at the first one, protection in prayer. Now, this is one of my favorite psalms. We're going to look at Psalm 91. How many of y'all are familiar with the 91st Psalm? I tell people all the time, you need to take this psalm and you need to read this psalm every day, especially right now, especially right now. How many of you know we need the protection of God in our lives? I say we need the protection of God in our lives in every way. Psalm 91 verse 1 says, he or she who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, first question is, where is the secret place? The secret place is your prayer closet. It's your prayer closet. What happens when you dwell in that secret place? Let's keep reading. He says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely, somebody say surely. He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers, and under his wings I shall take refuge. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the the bullets. You heard that, huh? Nor of the arrow that flies by day. Modern times, what's that? Come on, somebody. Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. I love this. A thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Y'all hear, you see, I put myself in there. You got to do the same thing, but it shall not come near me. Somebody say that. Say it shall not. It shall not come near me. It shall not come near my children. It shall not come near my family. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. I love this. It says, because you've made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, the most high God, your dwelling place, no evil will befall you. 
nor shall any plague come near you, come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels, somebody say his angels, angels. charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. God don't even want you to hit your pinky toe on nothing. That's how much protection he wants over you. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent shall you, tra shall you trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will deliver her. I will set her on high because she has known my name. She will call on me and I will answer her. I will be with her in trouble. I will deliver her and honor her. With long life, somebody say long life. long life, I will satisfy her and show her my salvation. Somebody ought to shout right there. Glory be to God. Prayer protects. Prayer protects. Add this, moms, add this to your daily routine. Number two, there are possibilities in prayer. Somebody say possibilities. In Mark chapter 9, we're going to go there in a second. In Mark chapter 9, beginning at verse 21, we find Jesus coming back from the Mount of Transfiguration. And he finds his disciples arguing with some religious leaders in a crowd. The man tells Jesus, he said, my son has been tormented by an evil spirit, which has made him unable to speak. And it causes him fits and convulsions and, and you know, the disciples couldn't do anything about it. They didn't know what to do. They couldn't help him. Jesus told them, bring me the boy. And when the evil spirit saw Jesus, as <laughs> soon as he saw Jesus, the boy started having fits all over again. Jesus says in verse 21, and let me just tell y'all this. Y'all know we in this day right now, right? We about to see some stuff. We about to see some stuff. Y'all better get ready. You better get in that secret place. You better be ready for the stuff you're about to see. You're going to find out the spirit world is very real. The spirit world is more real than this world. That's what you're about to find out. All right, let's keep going. Verse 21, how long has this been happening? That's Jesus. He asked him. Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy. The spirit often throws him into the fire or into water trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us. If you can, if you can, look what Jesus says. What do you mean? If I can, what you mean? If I can, Jesus asked, anything is possible. If a person would just believe, come on, somebody just believe the father. The father was wise. Y'all. He was a wise father. Look at what he said. He said, he said, he instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. Amen. There's a side of me that's, uh, there's unbelief in me. Help me out. Have mercy on me. Mercy. How many of you know sometimes we need mercy? Yes. Sometimes you just need mercy. Lord, I believe, but can you help me with this unbelief? Yes. There's a portion of me that just don't want to go all the way. I need you to just have mercy on that portion. Yes. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw the crowd of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear and speak. I command you to come out of this child and never enter him again. Amen. Then the spirit screamed and threw the boy into another violent convulsion and left him. The boy appeared to be dead and a murmur ran through the crowd as people said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand <laughs> and helped him to his feet. And he stood up. Somebody say he stood, he stood up. Afterward, when Jesus was alone in the house with his disciples, they asked him, why couldn't we cast out this evil spirit? And Jesus replied, this kind can only be cast out by prayer. Amen. Somebody say prayer, prayer. Is, a prayer. is a superpower. Say prayer, prayer. Is, my is my superpower. Come on, mom. Say prayer, prayer. is my superpower. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All things, y'all, are possible in prayer. Yes. All things. 
And then there is peace in prayer. Somebody say peace. peace. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, be anxious or be careful for nothing. Somebody say nothing. nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, don't forget the thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And what's going to happen when that happens? And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Somebody say there's peace in prayer. Prayer provides peace. You need peace in your life? Start praying more often. Start seeking the face of God more often. Start going to him and casting your cares. Whatever it is that's bothering you, give it to him. Lay it at his feet. He said if you'll do that, then you'll get peace. Peace that passes understanding. What does that mean? It means that it don't make sense that you have peace with what you're going through. How could you be going through the things that you're going through and have peace? I got a prayer life. I abide in a secret place. Come on, of the most high. Number four, provision in prayer. Somebody say provision. provision. Matthew 7, 7 says, Jesus speaking, he says, ask. Somebody say ask. Ask, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. And I love this. This is a, um, what do you call it? The ASK. What is the name for it? What is it called? Acronym. acronym. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. It's an acronym. The ASK is an acronym for ask, seek, knock. Ask, and keep on asking. Somebody say, keep on asking. See, it's not enough for you to just ask one time. No, you got to ask and keep on asking. You got to seek and keep on seeking. You got to knock and keep on knocking until it's opened for you. One thing you're going to notice about mothers is that mothers are persistent. I said moms are persistent. Anybody know that their mom is persistent? Amen. I remember we went to a conference years ago, and uh, my mom came back with this saying, uh, I want my harvest. And they said, so, it, it had something to do with, 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 with banging on stuff. I don't know what that part, how that part connected, but somehow it was, I want my harvest. And she was, she was knocking on everything, y'all. She was banging on the wall, I want my harvest. She was, I'm telling you, in her prayer, she gets stirred up, and I'm telling you, she, she didn't care. She was being persistent. She heard the instructions. She said, go and make this declaration. And she had no better sense than to follow those instructions. I want my harvest. She banging on the walls. And y'all know, I didn't know what was going on, but I had no better sense than to follow up with her. I want my harvest too. <laughs> Kicking stuff, knocking plants over. Bang. See, Danny, you're not in the spirit right now. You're just kicking stuff, man. What you doing? I want my harvest. Y'all, prayer opens up the heavens. It opens up the heavens. There is provision in prayer. Somebody say provision, provision. In, prayer. in prayer. And then number five, there is power in prayer. Somebody say power. power. There is power in prayer. James chapter five, verse 16 in the Amplified says, confess, your, confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another. Why? That you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous mother makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Oh, my God. Uh, don't you love when the, the Bible just preach itself? Yes. It just preaches own self. Yes. Tremendous power available. In other words, when you begin to pray, you begin to stir up the power. Amen. You begin to make it available. You begin to open up the heavens so that the power of God can come on down. Yes. Somebody say there's power in prayer. Power. Say there's power in prayer. 
prayer, y'all, gets things done. It gets things done. Don't make prayer the last thing you do. Too often we wait until the very last thing you say. Then we say, well, I guess I guess all we can do is pray. How disrespectful is that to God? That's all you can do. That should be the first thing that you do. It should be the chief thing that you do, the top thing, the most important thing. How do I, I want to pray. I want to make power available. Anybody want power available? See, you want to make it available before you need it. You want to make it available before you need it. You don't want to wait till the last minute and then you're trying, to, uh, you're trying to stir something up. No, no, no. You want to make it available long before you need it. Spring up a well within my soul. Yeah, you, gotta, you, gotta, you can create a well of power. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody say there's power in prayer. Now, how do I level up? How do we level up and become super moms? I want to give you some insights from the main super moms in my life. Amen. First and foremost, there's super mom Veronica, who when I think about her, I, I think about the protection in prayer. I think about her consistency in prayer, her faithfulness in prayer. And the power, like I said, of protection. She's the one who would always speak over us that 91st Psalm. She's the one who would study on a regular basis books about the angels of God, about the ministry of the angels of God. Angels provide protection. And I thank God for that protection, y'all. I have seen it work in my life over and over again. I've literally seen my life spared. In divine ways, unexplainable ways. You can only say that was God who did that. The angels of God are encamped about me. As a matter of fact, she prayed these prayers so much that we begin to, I, I, I know me for sure, begin to pray the prayer as well. This 91st song, we, Lisa and I went to a conference in New York and the man of God who was speaking stopped, called me out. And he said to me, he said, sir, he said, the devil has tried to destroy you. He said, but all I see around you is the angels of God. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm getting chills thinking about it. Lord, have mercy. He said, all I see around you is the angels of God. They're encamped all about you. In other words, they wait. They, they, they're on guard. They're positioned. Somebody say protection. protection. Say divine protection. Divine. She taught me that in prayer, there is protection, not just physical protection, divine protection. How many of you know you need protection so you don't go the wrong direction in life? Protection will keep you in the right direction. It'll keep you from hooking up with the wrong people. Hallelujah. It'll keep you from being in the wrong places at the wrong time. Somebody say protection. Then there's super mom dot <laughs> Dorothy Walker. That's my grandma Walker. Oh, there we go. There goes that picture. There goes, there goes some of the super women in my life. Amen. I had a praying grandmother, y'all. You know, Helen Bell, she's I had a praying grandmother. Y'all know that song? Somebody to call the name of Jesus. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I just slipped down the bed and I hit my head. Pow! Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> my grandmother Walker, that's the one on the end, she was a prolific writer. To me, she represents the possibilities in prayer. She represents the possibilities in prayer. Um, she would write poetry. She would make journal entries about pretty much recording the time that she spent in the secret place. When she would, you know, spend time with God, God would give her certain things and she would write it down and she would make journal entries. 
She will record the things that she received while she was in his presence. How many know if you want God to speak to you more, you need to put some respect on what he told you? I'm, so, I'm always so surprised at the people who want God to speak, speak to me, Lord, speak to me, Lord, and they can't remember none of the stuff he told them before. Why am I going to give you some new instructions? You ain't listening to the old instructions. She would record it. She would, she, would, she would put dignity on the things that she believed God was speaking to her. She wrote in her journal. From her, we, we, we learned the importance of having a devotional time with God. It's in your devotional time with God that you really see the possibilities of life. The possibilities of life. Your greatest inspiration will come, hear me good, your greatest inspiration will come in your devotional time with God. Some of us, we want to go and meditate and we want to do all these different things and all that's fine. But make sure when you meditate, you're meditating on the word. Make sure when, you, when, you, when you're being, having your quiet time, you're spending time with the Holy Ghost. You're not up in here with all, no, no Buddhist chants, you know, trying to float away. You're going to be on a float, flew somewhere you ain't want to go. I'm telling y'all, I'm, I, I'm telling y'all, we about to see some stuff. We about to see some stuff. Amen. So you better make sure you are grounded, rooted in the word. Come on, moms. Rooted and grounded in this word so that the Holy Ghost is the one that's leading you in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's in your devotional time that your greatest inspiration will come. Proverbs 16, 3. We have that. Proverbs 16, 3 says, commit your way to the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Now, journaling is a practical way. It's a, it's a practical thing. It's something that you can leave here today and go and do. It's a practical way to commit your plans to the Lord. Write it down. What, what is he speaking to? What is it? What's the vision that you see? What is it that you desire? Huh? What has God told you? Write it down and, and pray on Focus on that thing. Amen? Amen? Invite God into your thought processes and your goal setting and your trusting him. And he will guide your steps. Amen. All things are possible, moms. I said all things are possible. And then there's another super mom. My grandma Chopin, who reminds me that you got to have peace in prayer. Yeah. See, I had two praying grandmothers. And what I learned from grandma Chopin is if you're going to pray, don't worry. And if you're going to worry, don't pray. Just pick a side. Pick a side. Which one you going to do? If you're going to worry, what you praying for? But if you're going to pray, then cut out the worry. Amen. I can see her now with her, with her rosary beads. And she'll be, she be, you know, each one, and you, you, you pray a prayer as you go. Faithfully praying. Faithfully trusting God. Doing the best she could with what she knew. Amen. Boy, if I could get some people to just do the best they can with what they know. Do something with what you know. Grandma Chopin had a piece about her that was contagious. She wasn't easily bothered by things. And in my experience, she would sooner make a joke about a situation than complain about it. As she got older, she had some different aches and some pains that would give us some troubles. Amen. But even in that, she still remained a sweet woman who loved everyone. She wasn't just my grandmother. She was everybody's grandmother. <laughs> yeah. See, when you trust God in prayer, it'll bring peace into your life. Somebody say peace. I got another super mom for you. Super mom Lisa Walker. Can I testify? See, super mom Lisa, she reminds me of provision in prayer. The provision. She, you know, there's so much I can say about her. She is uh, such a wonderful wife. She's a godly wife. She's a fantastic mother. Tremendous support. Lisa has beat the odds, y'all. She has beat the odds to really become uh, what she is. You know, I call her, she's the rose that grew out of the concrete. Amen. You know, it's sort of an Im impossible. How did, you, how did you escape? How did you manage to be the person that you are? Amen. God did it, y'all. God did it. Amen. 
God did it. See, there was a time in her life because of her own situations and things that she saw in her life where she didn't even want to get married. She didn't even want to necessarily have even have kids, none of that stuff. I know I had to come in and bind that feminist spirit. <laughs> bind it up in Jesus' name. Come out. Okay, all right, all right, all right. From Lisa, <laughs> from Lisa we learned <laughs> that we ought to pray boldly. Somebody say pray boldly. boldly. Scripture says in Hebrews that we can come to the throne of God Boldly. Somebody say boldly. boldly. Well, y'all, I want you to know Lisa really takes that scripture to heart. You know, I've asked, she, she asked for stuff and I'm like, oh, God, okay, amen, amen. I'm in agreement, I'm in agreement. Because she's asking big. She's asking bold. She's declaring things that's wild, y'all. Say, my God. Provision in prayer. Jesus. This woman is a radical. I've watched her get hit and bounce back. Amen. I've watched her, y'all. We, we suffered multiple losses when we were trying to build our family. And every time after she would get that hit, she would come back with boldness. Amen. And in the face of fear, she would believe God that she was going to carry the full term. Amen. Somebody say, See, it's, remember we talked about that peace that passes understanding? That's the, that's the moment, I'm, that's the types of moments I'm talking about. When you find some kind of way you got peace that don't make sense. When the doctors have told you there's a good chance this may never happen. When you lost your fallopian too. How many of you know you need a fallopian too? I ain't no doctor, but I know you need a fallopian too to get pregnant. In the face of all that, still praying a bold prayer, Amen. still believing God Amen. that he's going to fulfill the promises that in her life, yes. that she's going to see what he promised in her life. Yes. Somebody say boldness. Yes. She even prayed that God would make her a good mother once we finally had the kids. She prayed that God would make her a good mother and God told her that he would give her the wherewithal to do it. She went later, she didn't even know what wherewithal meant. She just thought it meant, okay, the ability to do it, whatever. She went later and looked it up, and wherewithal literally means the provision. <laughs> Somebody say there's provision in prayer. There's provision in prayer. There is provision in prayer. She prayed for the wherewithal. God said, I'm going to give you the wherewithal. I'm going to show you how to do it, and I'm going to give you everything you need to make it happen. Amen. That's what happens when you pray bold prayers. Mothers, I want y'all to pray bold prayers. Pray bold prayers. Get in God's face. Start bamming on them walls like, like mom Veronica was doing. Say, Lord, you got to come through. You got to come through, Lord. You got to come through, Lord. Get in his face. Kenneth Hagin said, if the Holy Ghost don't move you, you got to move the Holy Ghost. Y'all, this lady prays for a bold. She prays boldly. She even prayed, y'all, for the ultimate husband. And you can see that God answered her prayers. <laughs> Let me sip my water. <laughs> Amen. Amen, anyhow. I don't care what y'all say. And then, y'all, we got we to gotta close. We got to wrap up. We got to close. Y'all, time doesn't permit to go into all of the, the women I call the mothers in Zion. The mothers in Zion who have prayed, who I've seen pray throughout my life, who I've seen stand the test of time. Those who represent the power in prayer. Yeah. Somebody say power in prayer. Power in prayer. These are the women I've seen. I've observed them for years. They're, they're, I call, like I said, I call them mothers in Zion. They're the ones who pray not only for themselves, but for others. Amen. They're the ones who produce and nurture spiritual children. They live faithful lives, faithful to God, faithful in their giving, faithful in their serving. Just faithful, y'all. Just faithful, y'all. Y'all see my power ran up there, huh? 
No, that's not power rain. What is it? Not power rain. Man, nay, nay. Nay, nay. Lord, have mercy. I know I ain't used that word in so long. Power What is a power For all our millions that's watching around the world, power is a male version of your godparent. All right. Explain that for all our millions watching. My ma ran. No, ain't no ma ran. What is it? Man, look, it's my godmama. God, Jesus. My godmother, folks. My godmother. My nene. My auntie Deborah. How about that? Faithful, y'all. Faithful. Have seen her. Have seen. Have watched her. She's one of those mothers in Zion. Have watched her pray. Have watched her. Let me tell you something. Just you being able to stay consistent following God, y'all, that's, y'all, that's something all by itself. I mean, there's a lot of people who just fall by the wayside. When you can walk with God for decades. Years ago, she, she woke up to something. She leveled up in her belief system. She was, she was saved, but she, she, you know, she, she leveled up in her belief system. And she was bold enough to, to say, you know what? I'm going further with God. Yeah, yeah. I want to go further with God. Yeah. And there's so many mothers like that. There's, I, I, I can't even begin to name it, but I, I see even in the house today. I thank God for you all. I thank God for your perseverance. I thank God for you continuing with God. You got to understand that people are watching your life. Whether you realize it or not, moms, people are watching your life. Especially if you're a Christian. They're watching you. And some of y'all have walked with God for decades. And today I salute you. I applaud you. You are, you are a mother in Zion. God has blessed your life. I say God has blessed your life. Moms, God is calling you up higher to the next level. Level up in your prayer life. Become a super mom. Commit your whole self to God. Go all the way with him. When you're having a baby, what does the doctor tell you to do? Push. What does push mean? Pray until something happens. Somebody say push. Say push. Bring it forth. Your baby is almost here. And when you do, here's what's going to happen. When you do that, you are going to produce and raise up a new generation who will carry the torch of the gospel around the world till all men know that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Somebody give God a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Did you receive this morning? Every head bow, every eye close, every believe in the attitude of prayer. We want to give those who are here and maybe those watching an opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord. If you've not done that already, I want to show you how you can become a part of the kingdom of God. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, the Bible says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it's by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to forgive me, to make me new. You said, if anyone call on you, you would in no wise turn them away. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. If you pray that prayer, we want you to contact us. You can type into the comments, I am saved. You can even call or text us at 504-345-8932, or you can email us at prayer at thewholefamilychurch.com. We want to hear from you today. Now, if you, believe, if you prayed that prayer, I want to tell you also you need to get connected to a Bible-believing church. You need to be somewhere where the love of God is present. And you can be fed the word of God so you can grow. Well, I'm going to tell you, we're in a place like that right now. We're in the whole family church. 3469 Ames Boulevard in Marrero, Louisiana. Please come. Come and and grow with us. Come and learn of, of him. 
Amen. Come and be a part of this growing body of believers. We look forward to seeing you in the house. Well, thank you for tuning in. For all those who are at home and even those who are here, just lift your hands. I want to pray this blessing over you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and the Lord give you peace. What's that? Nothing Nothing missing. Nothing nothing broken in your life. You are whole. Have a great week. Come on, y'all. Give God a hand clap of praise one more time. Glory to be to today. I'm Pastor David Walker, and we'd like to give you an opportunity to support the ministry. There are four ways that you can give. You can download the free Church Center app, find the Whole Family Church, and sow your seed there. You can give online at www.twfcla.com. You can text to give. Simply send a text of any amount to 84321 and follow the instructions. Lastly, you can mail your gift to us. We're located at 3469 Ames Boulevard, Marrero, Louisiana, 70072. Thank you for supporting the ministry of the Whole Family Church. We declare that there's nothing missing, nothing broken in your life. You are whole.